Hello, welcome to another edition of Turn 7. Uh, this is a follow-up video. I uh, posted a video uh, the other day about inexperienced infantry and how I felt that uh, Warlord games uh, unjustly penalized them minus one for shooting. And I think how in, in doing that it, it hurts the game of bolt action and is it uh, diminishes the, the diversity in army building and lists. Uh, and then I had a question or a comment from uh, Tom uh, Desjardins on my YouTube video and he posed a question about uh, how that would affect vehicles and that, that's a great question uh, and it got it got my brain spinning at how great it would be for bolt action to remove the inexperienced minus one penalty across the board uh, for, for all shooting and when you look at vehicles in bolt action uh, it, it's, it's a primarily infantry based game and then uh, the biggest gripes that I hear from people on uh, the forums and on different uh, formats is that uh, mainly like the Germany book came out early uh, and it overcost a lot of the big tanks because people like to take their Tiger tanks or Panther tanks and uh, etc. Uh, where they feel maybe the the Soviet book is uh, a little more uh, cost effective, <clears throat> but people still want to take their big tanks. So in doing uh, removing the minus one to hit for inexperience, it creates a enormous dynamic in the armor selection part of your army building list that is basically not there right now. Uh, there's some certain default uh, equipment that people take. They take a, you know, like a, it, some of it is depending on taste, but it, it's a very small selector of what, what you're going to take. Uh, a lot of like the, uh, you know, Chafees and with the Recce and the 75 millimeter gun, those are given because the powerful rules of, of Recce. But outside of that, uh, there's just a few vehicles out of the vehicles of choice or people rather take no vehicle. If you get rid of the minus one uh, to hit from inexperience, you will be able to put units in, in a wide variety uh, and the disparity between light, medium, and heavy tanks uh, goes away. A lot of the big gripes about the point costing is that it costs too much to increase the extra armor and to increase the anti-tank gun, the price goes up uh, significantly. So when you look at the points in for the inexperienced range of vehicles, it, it balances out quite a bit when you're building your army list in that you can choose to take you know a regular or a veteran small tank and you m might be in a point equivalent to a medium inexperienced tank or a heavy inexperienced tank, or maybe a little under, but it gives you that variety of list building and you never know what you're gonna face and you can fit your army and tailor your army to the way that you want to play it. Um, one of the comments that Tom had mentioned was, you know, what I said, nobody takes inexperienced vehicles. And uh, he said, uh, flamethrower tanks. And that's a great point. Flamethrower vehicles, they're already pretty much banned at all tournament events because they're too powerful. Uh, another thing is you can take an inexperienced flamethrower tank. So not only is it insulting to be uh, destroyed by a flamethrower tank that is overpowered in the game, you can also take it at a significant points reduction because you can take it as inexperienced because it doesn't need to roll to hit. So uh, that's a no-brainer right there. Get rid of uh, anything that makes flamethrower vehicles more powerful than regular vehicles. You know, it just seems uh, it's a red flag for me right off the bat. So look at let's look at some point costs for some for some vehicles, and I've got some German and some a British and a couple French things over here, and. You know, one of the other questions uh, is, you know, open top as far as S SP guns and artillery pieces and things. Uh, they already don't take minus one when they, they can choose to fire indirect. So they don't take a minus one when they fire indirect. So they already have a little bit of advantage. Many of your SP guns are open topped. Open topped won't make any difference. Uh, you don't really want an open topped uh, SP gun as inexperienced because it's going to take pins from not only it's going to take pins from everything and it's going to be very difficult to activate it so that's that's really the rub when deciding to take an inexperienced tank even if it's closed top is that you will still be the mechanic is already in bolt action a great mechanic 
It's already in bolt action in that you take a hit from a heavy weapon and it is a uh, inexperience, you automatically take a pin. If it's regular, 50-50 uh, chance you're going to take a pin and regular you ignore it if it can't penetrate you. So I got a, uh, uh, you see a lot of light anti-tank guns and uh, or uh, anti-tank rifles out there. Those would be very valuable against an inexperienced, even an inexperienced tiger tank. Uh, so, because it's going to cause a pin, It'll just be one pin, can't really hurt. If you take an inexperienced, well, you actually can't take an inexperienced tiger tank. It's not available. Let's say a Yager Panzer four, inexperienced. I got a ten front armor, but I took it as inexperienced, trying to save points. I'm going to be fighting against pins the entire time for my value. So as a player, I need to utilize my big heavy tank uh, to the best of my advantage by you know getting those shots off before I take those pins. My opponent can spend his resources putting pins on me and it'd be a very fun dynamic in the game. He may take a uh, even a light little tank like that with a light auto cannon on it as a counter to my inexperienced heavy tank because he will be putting pins on me. Uh, I think it's I think it's great. So let's look at the points value. Let's say a Panzer III, very standard uh, Panzer III tank, uh, as the G version, which is a light tank, uh, inexperienced 124 points, medium 155, veteran 186. The the HJ version, which is a, a nine up armor, it has it's 156 points, 195 points, and then up to jumps up to 234 points for a veteran. So you got a 234 point Panzer III as a veteran. I know that this tank is not taking pins from any junk shots. Uh, so then I'm going to be fighting against, let's say, a, a Panzer IV or a class type tank with a heavy anti-tank gun. Well, the Panzer IV, if they took that guy with inexperience, you can get the, uh, the heavy anti-tank version, the G, uh, as at 188 points for inexperience. So you got 188 points against my more expensive Panzer III at veteran. That's, you know, a veteran crew. They're going to be testing on a 10. They don't take pins from those light anti-tank guns and various things like a small arms, uh, small heavy weapons shots like light out of cannons and whatnot. Uh, but this guy here who now is actually cheaper than me or equivalent to me if I was regular, I can field it. You don't have to worry about any off front, low fuel, stupid rules to uh, trying to play with a theater book to try to get in there. I can bring it for a decent cost, but anything can put pins on me. So, uh, and I've got an eight value. So I think that would be a great tank duel, depending on the other uh, units that are on the field. Trying to put pins on there one failed activation check can cause your tank to die you know you look at a panther tank it's still 284 points at inexperience that's almost 300 points and you get to bring a big panther tank uh that that is uh, in regular 355 and veteran 426 i mean that's a huge point swing uh it'd be better to take a panzer four at veteran if you were really worried about the pins for 282 points as opposed to a uh, well yeah a veteran panzer 4 282 points a inexperienced panther 284 points they're almost equal and it's just going to be depending on your play style i want to really bring my panther i don't have the points to make it regular or veteran it's equivalent to a panzer 4 at veteran so now it's I've given up two on the morale checks. I take pins from everything as opposed to the Panzer IV. What's the better value? It's the way you want to play them. That's the way you should build. That's the way you should be able to build your army. It's the way you want to play. A veteran crew in this as opposed to a Panther with an inexperienced crew, equal points. Uh, so, you know, like the Yager Panzer, inexperienced 216, regular 270, veteran two, 324. You're really jumping up in the points cost. Uh, so you look at inexperience to veteran in that tank, you're 120 points different. 120. You, between the, the regular and the veteran, you're looking at 50 points. So, I mean, inexperienced and regular. So, that's, uh, 
that's a huge amount of points when you're building your list. And it's going to be depending on what you choose, how you're going to be able to play it. If I want to take that as a veteran, I can jam it up in there and take shots from everything. That's fine. If I want to take this inexperienced, I have to play it more carefully. And then, you, you know, open top stuff, you can get, and, and that's the other thing to this, because a lot of people take early war tanks, like the A9 125 point tank at regular. The points drop from taking an inexperienced uh, A9 cruiser tank or some small piece of equipment. It's only like 20 points. Uh, yeah, the A9 is a 25 point drop. Yeah. Okay, continuing. Uh, yeah, it's only so a 25 point uh, points difference. You you don't get the bigger value. To me, I'm going to take my A9 cruiser tank. I'm going to take that at regular. The, be, just because I don't want to worry about taking pins every time make sure I activate you know the machine gun this, these are made I take this for the machine guns uh, taking it as inexperienced well I won't take the minus one so I can save 20 points to me it's not worth it if it doesn't activate so you know like armored car normally 95 points drops down to like 70 let's see 76 points okay it's open topped uh, I'm going to be taking pins all the time anyway. Do do I want to just go ahead and take a save a 19 points? Maybe. Uh, may not activate. Is that one morale check, one difference? It, it's up to me and my personal decision if I have points in my list. Take a closed top armored car like the Panard. Uh, it's normally 115 points and uh, drop it down to 92. So. To the, to, for me, this one, the value would be keeping it at regular. Where, the, where this one's already open top, so anything shooting me, I'm going to be taking a pin. Uh, this guy, uh, I may not want to do that. Because if I'm at regular, I don't. I take 50% of the pins from heavy weapons that don't penetrate. Uh, make sure I activate. Or I think, hey, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to take save a few points and take it at 92. I save 19 points. Not the end of the world. When you're talking like a hundred point swing in these big tanks that people want to take, bolt action doesn't really let you take them without showing up in the list that's not very playable or competitive. Uh, got your nice little French tank here, the Suma, Soma. Uh, it's regularly 135 points. You know, everyone's got knows about like a single turret, uh, single man turret, very difficult for it to work. Uh, to take it as inexperienced might be an option at 108 points uh, because now it's already got a low morale I gotta pass that mo morale check in order to advance uh, it may just be re worth it for me to take it regular or it may not the, my play style with this tank is gonna be that I don't care what happens to it it's gonna be a distraction I'm just planning to run it in and then let it get shot uh, so I don't mind taking an, an inexperienced but that's the option as a player that, that I could take Nobody takes inexperienced tanks uh, as it stands. They could just line out the entire uh, section for inexperienced tanks because your value for taking an inexperienced tank sucks. When you spend 230 or 200 points, 195 points for a tank, that is minus one to hit right off the bat. Your your point value cost for those vehicles goes down significantly. Uh, it, most people don't even take veteran, uh, other than American players, uh, because the American players want to uh, get the gyro stabilizer. Uh, I think that's the only reason why you want to take a veteran and any kind of uh, light medium tank. Uh, I do see where people take the big tanks, the 10 up armor as a veteran to avoid that pin mechanic. But then you're really jumping up into some huge points over 300 to 400 points. And uh, I, th I would think that uh, taking a Panther at inexperience for 284 points and just living with the idea that you're gonna be getting pinned is okay because as a player, at least I can field it and try to work my tank appropriately uh, to avoid those light anti-tank things and to have a counter to my opponent's vehicles. But taking it at veteran 
just to keep it, it, it is not worth a uh, hundred point increase, a hundred and forty point increase. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, you know, open top vehicles like the Buffalo, they won't be affected anyway because they're already open top. So you take one inexperienced, a lot of people do for their transports. Doesn't really affect. I mean, yeah, it's got machine guns on there, but open top transports fire with the with the crew the people that are riding in them anyway so you take a inexperienced uh, hard target half track or buffalo it, it's irrelevant because they take pins because they're open top from anything that shoots at them and they're firing at the at the experience of the people inside them so yeah so that's my thoughts on on that i i i, I really enjoy bolt action i think it's a great game I think they've got the mechanics already in place. Uh, anytime I see a trend in losing diversity in people's play styles for the sake of being competitive, uh, it just to me raises a flag of is that what you truly intended for the game of bolt action? I think that they intended that if I wanted to bring a Panzer II uh, or a uh, Yager Panzer to the field and I bring my veteran infantry or inexperienced infantry that I'm paying a standard point cost the same as my opponent is and that I can field those choices. I know that my infantry is more susceptible. I know that my tank is more susceptible. I'm sacrificing those points to bring it whether it's a psychological or just for fun that I want to bring that vehicle, but it's still competitive with you, as opposed to now where people try to play historically, uh, they bring historical accurate armies because they love the, the genre of World War II and they like building the models, you oftentimes are not competitive or not, I mean, anybody can win, but you are handicapping yourself quite a bit. You know, 20 point light machine guns, you know, it's like, yeah, separate topic, but uh, oh, that's the other thing too. Is if I could purchase my tanks at a, at a lower point value in a single platoon type of tournament format, where do you think those points are going to go? They're either going to go into a uh, tank at regular or veteran, or if I can take it at inexperienced, I can funnel those points and they're going to go into my troops. So I may be able to take those 10-man squads, 8-man infantry squads, uh, because I've already maxed out my tank slot, and I put my artillery in, and now I can take an armored car, or I can put my points into my troops. Uh, I'd like to see 8-10-man to 10 -man infantry squads. I'd like to see the light machine guns, whether they adjust the point cost or not. Uh, they should. It should be 10 points for a wash. But, uh... Yeah, so thanks for watching. Post your comments. Thanks, Tom, for commenting on my other video and getting me thinking about this. I love discussing bolt action and look forward to talking to you some more. Thanks. Another thing to consider, sorry, last second, is that tank crewmen were not untrained. They may be inexperienced, but they're not untrained. They went to tank gunnery school. So inexperienced troops already are going to be taking more pins than regular and veteran it's built into the mechanic so they're going to by default oftentimes have more negative modifiers to shoot or not shoot because they fail a check than a regular or a veteran crewman think about it you've got this greenish new uh, tank crew let's take fire from any tank rifle they don't know that it won't hurt them, so they're going to take a pin. They uh, fail an activation check because of the pins, because they're panicking. That's what an activation check is about. They uh, take multiple pins from uh, two different sources of fire, and now even though they activate an order check and they get fire, they're, they're at minus one. Where a regular crew wouldn't have even taken half of those because they they don't even take one on, a, on a, something that doesn't damage them they pass their order checks uh more often because they're not uh because they have a higher morale veteran veteran crews they don't even take any pins from things that don't damage them not even a 50 50 they have a higher morale so they pass more often so the mechanic for the pin mechanic 
for for an inexperienced crew is already in there. The minus one is already there because they're going to be not activating as much. So one turn out of six, they fail an activation check. That's because they were panicking. Uh, it's just so obvious to me that they should get rid of the minus one. So think about it, digest it, comment. Uh, if you like, you know, my videos, uh, I like your input. I like to discuss this stuff with you. Feel free to put a comment. Uh, even if you disagree, I'd like to know why, because I don't always see everything. Uh, just try to put your comments why in how it affects the game. Uh, oftentimes, people, we, we, myself included, we start to play a game, we get used to the rule set, and it becomes ingrained in us. But stop, take a step back, and think about it. It makes no sense to have the minus one. It's an overlapping game mechanic where you're with the with the activation check uh, already. So. Thanks for watching.